Week 7 was an up and down weekend. Some teams survived an upset scare, while others weren't so lucky. Here's your Week 7 college football recap in under 5 minutes. Friday night, Oregon took a 10-7 lead over a 1-4 Cal Berkeley team into half after having multiple costly turnovers. The Bears would not go away and took the lead 17-10 early in the fourth quarter. The Ducks lead on Travis Dye as he carried them down the field. Anthony Brown would score late in the fourth to take the lead, and the Ducks would hold on to win. In the other ranked matchup of the night, points were a luxury with San Diego State and San Jose State trading field goals throughout the night. At the end of regulation, the score would be 6-6 after San Jose State missed a possible game-winning 52-yard field goal, with 15 seconds left. San Diego State finally put the ball in the end zone in the first overtime on a Lucas Johnson pass to Jesse Matthews. San Jose State would answer with a touchdown of their own. In the second overtime, Nick Nash would be picked off in the end zone, and San Diego State would respond with a touchdown to win the game 19-13 to move to 6-0. On Saturday, the noon kickoff window would be a crowded one full of ranked teams. Number 3 Cincinnati continued to roll behind Jerome Ford's 189 rushing yards and 4 touchdowns on their way to a 56-21 win over UCF. Texas A&M would not be caught sleepwalking against Missouri after their big win over Alabama. The Aggies would beat Mizzou 35-14 behind Isaiah Spiller's 168 rushing yards. In a big game against Arkansas, Bo Nix would play arguably his best game of his career for the Tigers in a 38-23 win over the Razorbacks. Arkansas's third loss in a row. Not a lot of people gave LSU a chance against the number 20th ranked Florida Gators. The Tigers would take advantage of a combined four interceptions between Emory Jones and Anthony Richardson, and Tyrone Davis Price would break Leonard Fournette's rushing yard record for a single game with 287 yards and three touchdowns. LSU would score the most points they've ever scored in the series against the Gators, beating Florida 49-42. Ed Odron and LSU would come to an agreement to separate after the season after the game as well. Many talked about how the Indiana game was a trap game for Michigan State and the Hoosiers would make the Spartan fans sweat a little bit, but couldn't do enough with Michigan State surviving 20-15 to move to 7-0. Texas would take a 17-3 lead over Oklahoma State early in the second quarter, but the offense would disappear again like it had against Oklahoma the week before. Casey Thompson dealt with a hand injury, and B. John Robinson's 135 yards and two touchdowns was not enough. Jalen Warren would have himself a day rushing for 193 yards, being a key part of the Cowboys' comeback, as they would come back and win 32-24 to stay unbeaten. When it came to the 3.30 kickoffs, Georgia would jump out to an early 14-0 lead before Kentucky scored with just under 14 minutes left in the half. Georgia would score 10 unanswered points to start the third quarter to take a 24-7 lead and never looked back winning 30-13. Iowa would get caught sleepwalking early against Purdue, falling behind 7-0. Both teams would miss field goals, but the Hawkeyes would tie the game with just a little over 3 minutes left in the half. Purdue would score right before half and take a 14-7 lead into halftime. Purdue's David Bell and their three quarterbacks never looked back as they rolled to a 24-7 win over the number 2 team in the nation, the Iowa Hawkeyes. Against number 19 BYU, Baylor would take a 17-7 lead into half at home and just continue to pull away the rest of the game. I also want to mention that RG3 participated in the student section run before the start of the game as well. Final score, Baylor 38, BYU 24. Number 22 NC State rolled Boston College 33-7 behind Devin Leary's three passing touchdowns. And Alabama bounced back with a 49-9 win over Mississippi State with Bryce Young throwing for 348 yards and four touchdowns. Caleb Williams impressed in his first career start accounting for over 350 yards and five touchdowns as Oklahoma rolled TCU 52-31. Matt Corral showed why he is in the conversation for the Heisman Trophy, accounting for over 426 yards on offense, but it was overshadowed by bad officiating throughout the game and a controversial call that led to fans throwing things on the field. Stands primarily in the south end zone, but also towards the Tennessee bench. Final score, Ole Miss 31, Tennessee 26. Everyone talked about how Arizona State was on upset alert against Utah, and that they were as Utah climbed back from a 21-7 halftime deficit to win 35-21, upsetting the 18th ranked team in the nation. Although it was not as hectic as last week, it was still a fun college football weekend as we hit the halfway point for the year. What do you think about this season so far? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other videos right here. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.